Hello and welcome back to Grandad's Art Space. Let me just get the camera right. That's it. So what am I doing today? Well, I'm just catching up, trying to finish off doing the basic paint jobs on the horses. I'm doing working on the hooves today at the moment um, doing them in burnt umber I prefer them in burnt umber than black black to me is too stark a colour and I don't like painting in black full stop not even on uniforms I'd rather mix a dark colour that gets close to black it looks far better because it's got the, the browns and the blues and various other colours mixed into it so to me it looks a lot better than just pure black I've managed to finish doing all the the saddlery and the horse blankets and all the um, the riding gear so I'm just doing the hooves now so I can sort of like put the horse side of it to one side as it were knowing that all the base coats are on and then I can move on to the troopers themselves now I've been having a think I was watching Seventh Son the other day and he'd done a documentary on the Wars of the Roses and it was brilliant absolutely fantastic if, you, if you're into the Wars of the Roses then go along to Seventh Son and watch his documentary and I'll call it a documentary because that's what it was it was excellent very well done on the Wars of the Roses thoroughly enjoyed it I might even look at that in the future I don't know so it got me thinking well what can I do that would be different and Monday night on the crack pod um, podcast they were actually talking about people that are into their certain periods actually doing something about their own period so I thought yes that's a good idea I can do something like that so I've got a lot of information that I've gathered over some time I don't like the way his foot's standing off the, the base never mind um, about the English Civil War. Now all this information has either come out of books or it's come off the internet. None of it's my own work. That, oops, that's something I hate doing. Fingers suddenly open sometimes and the way stuff goes. None of it's my own work. Um, it's every other people's work. Uh, um, credit to all those historians who have gone and sourced all this information and as I say most of this you can find openly on the, the internet anyway so I thought right well I'm working on Fairfax's horse at the moment and this is just one element of Fairfax's horse you'll be quite surprised at how many different elements he had so I thought I'd go back and I'd start basically at the beginning and give you some background history I'm going to try and read it and paint at the same time that may well end up disastrous I'm liable to end up painting burnt umber all over the horse but you know if I do then 
I'll just have to go back and repaint the horse. So, here we go. Ferdinand Fairfax. Second Lord Fairfax. 1584 to 1648. Leader of the Yorkshire Parliamentarians during the English Civil War. Ferdinand was the eldest son of Thomas Fairfax of Denton in Yorkshire, 1560 to 1640, who in 1627 was created Baron Fairfax of Cameron in the Scottish Peerage. Ferdinand succeeded to the title in 1640 after gaining military experience in the Netherlands. He served as, as a Justice of the Peace from 1611 and sat as MP for Boroughbridge, Yorkshire. During the six parliaments from 1640 to 29 and during the short parliament of 1640, he commanded a regiment during the Bishop's Wars, but, but joined the opposition to the King's policies on his election to the Long Parliament in November 1640. You can hear silly chimp noises coming over. It's the kids outside as they're coming home from school playing silly nonsense. I dare say you get it everywhere. Oh, I do apologise for all their enthusiasm, should we say. But Unfortunately, some of the youths around here are like that. Okay. On the outbreak of the First Civil War, Fairfax was proclaimed leader of the Yorkshire Parliamentarians in September 1642. He signed a treaty of neutrality with the Yorkshire Royalists, which was fiercely opposed by Sir John Hotham and his son, who regarded themselves as rivals for leadership of Parliament's forces in Yorkshire. In December 1642, the Earl, later Marquess of Newcastle, advanced towards York, forcing Fairfax to withdraw to Selby, after Sir Hugh Chomley, Governor of Scarborough, defected to the Royalists in March of 1643. Fairfax withdrew to Leeds. His rear guard was defeated by Lord Goring at Seacroft Moor. Fairfax and his son Sir Thomas held off Royalist attacks on Leeds during the spring of 1643, but they were severely defeated at Adwalton Moor near Bradford on the 30th of June, which left the Royalists in control of the whole of Yorkshire except for the port of Hull. The Fairfaxes withdrew to Hull from where they directed raids on Royalist strongholds in Yorkshire, which prompted the Earl of Newcastle to abandon his march south and return to besiege Hull. The siege was unsuccessful and was abandoned in October of 1643, enabling the Fairfaxes to begin recovering the East Riding for Parliament. Now, I find all this stuff very, very interesting. A lot of people get bored with it. But I find history very interesting. It's, it's a subject that you learn a lot. It's just a shame that we don't Look at history and stop repeating what we've done before. Okay. Lord Fairfax recaptured Selby um, in April 1644 and joined the Earl of Manchester and the Army of the Covenant at the Siege of York. He was one of the Allied commanders at the Battle of Marston Moor but fled the field after his infantry were routed, believing the battle to be lost. In July 1644, he was appointed governor of York and ordered to mop up royalist resistance in Yorkshire. In December of 1644, he captured the town of Pontefract, 
but was unable to secure the castle. He resigned his command with the adoption of the self-denying ordinance in April 1645, but remained an influential member of the parliamentary committee that governed Yorkshire. He died in March of 1648. Lord Fairfax was married twice. This is Ferdinand, by the way, was married twice by his first wife, Mary. He had six daughters and two sons. Thomas, who succeeded him, was third baron, and Charles, a cavalry colonel, who was killed at Marston Moor. That was um, Thomas's brother, Charles. He also had a cavalry regiment. I might do his as well. Well, I'm going to have to if I'm doing all the all the forces that took part at Marston Moor. And there's a lot of them. It's surprised how many there is. It's surprising me as I'm sorting all the information here. But that's Ferdinand, just Thomas Fairfax's father. The next time I will go on and start discussing and give you a little bit of potted history on Sir Thomas himself. Um, I'm going to carry on painting all the hooves of these horses and then I'm going to start looking at painting the troopers themselves. So the next time I'll make a video. Hopefully, I should have all the base coats on, but I'm not promising anything. Because like I say, I'm a slow painter, and I have lots of other things to do as well. So, stuff takes time. But if I don't get to make another video before Christmas, Hope you all have a lovely Christmas. I hope you all get the models and the figures that you want and you've asked for, and then some besides. And I hope and pray that you take care of yourselves. Don't get too um, wrapped up with Christmas and go and catch the bug, the virus. Um, stay safe. See you soon. God bless. Goodbye.